Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with the next video in our circuit analysis lecture series. So last time we talked about AC circuits. Now AC means alternating current. You can tell from the name that that means the current is going to alternate directions or flow back and forth as time passes. Okay? Then we talked about some vocabulary that we're going to need for AC circuits like frequency, amplitude, phase, and all that good stuff. Now we also introduced the idea of the phaser. Now the phaser allows us to eliminate frequency from our calculations because we said that the frequency is going to be the same regardless of where we're at in the circuit. Okay? So hopefully you have a pretty good foundation of what AC circuits are and if you don't please go back double check the or double check that video just to make sure you're at least good on the vocabulary and sort of semi understand phasers and what we're going to be doing. Now all you have to do for phasers is just think about them being a complex vector that's pointing somewhere with a or pointing in a certain direction with a certain magnitude. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's topic, which is going to be impedance. Now I'll go ahead and get out of your way, and then we can go ahead and start talking about this. Now impedance, this is a new word, something that we haven't talked about yet so far, and it's how we're going to relate voltage and current in these AC circuits. Okay, so. Let's talk about what we know about how voltage and current are related so far. So the first thing you should think of is, well, Ohm's law is V, let me use a small v, V is equal to I times R, right? That's just Ohm's law. And that's one of the first things that we've learned. And we know that that's how we relate voltage and current in a resistor. Okay? Now for capacitors, we know that the current through a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times dV dt which is the change in its voltage. Okay, so we know that I is equal to C dV dt in a capacitor. For an inductor, we know that the voltage is equal to L times di over dt. Okay, so now we have these three equations and this is how we're going to relate voltage and current in each of these circuits. So if we're giving a certain voltage, then we're going to know the current based off of these equations, okay? So in AC circuits, we're only concerned with what's going to happen at a single frequency. Okay, that's something that we said in the previous video. Typically, we're only concerned about one frequency. So that's why we're going to be using these phasers. Okay? And we're typically also only interested in sinusoidal excitations. So sinusoidal voltages and sinusoidal currents. Okay, so let's plug in some Mach values here. Okay, so let's assume that, you know, let's say that we have a... Uh, Let's start off with the most simple case, which is just a resistor in an AC circuit. So if we have an AC source and a resistor, and we know the value of the amplitude, frequency, and phase for this source, so I'm just going to call this Vs, and we know the resistance, how can we calculate the current that's going to flow through that resistor? Well, it's just Ohm's law, okay? So if we do Ohm's law, let's say Vs is equal to 10 volts times cosine 2 pi times 1000 T, so the frequency of 1000 Hertz or one kilohertz. And then let's say that there's no phase. So it's, there's no phase shift at all in this voltage. What's gonna be the current? Well, we can plug this value for V into Ohm's law, and we can just say I is going to be Vs divided by R. So let's say R is equal to two ohms. And then this is going to be 10 volts divided by two ohms times cosine 2 pi times 1000 T. And this is just 5 amps cosine 2 pi times 1000 T. Okay. So you can see in the time domain, there's no change in the phase. The only thing that's changing is the amplitude. Okay, so that amplitude is going from 10 to 5 because of that resistance. Okay, so how can we write this in the frequency domain? Well, Let's start off by writing the voltage of the source in the frequency domain. So big V, remember, denotes frequency domain. So let's see, what is big V for the source? Well, the amplitude is 10. Okay? We don't care about the frequency. We don't care about all that cosine stuff. All we care about in this, uh, in this representation is the phase. So what is the phase? Well, we don't have one, so that's just going to be 0 degrees. So amplitude of 10 with a phase of 0 degrees. Now let's represent this. Let's represent this here, the current, as a phasor. Now, so let's say I. Well, once again, its magnitude is five. Okay, similar to the voltage. This one's magnitude is five. What's its phase? 
Well, just like the last time, the phase is going to be zero degrees. Okay, so how can we relate voltage and current in these AC circuits for a resistor? Well, you can see that it's pretty much just Ohm's law, right? It's just Ohm's law. So the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. Now notice I'm using the capital letters here, showing that even in the frequency domain, Ohm's law still holds. Okay, so the resistor in the frequency domain behaves the exact same way as it would in the time domain. Okay, so that means if you know the voltage across the resistor in the frequency domain, all you have to do is divide by R, and that's going to give you the current through that resistor. Okay, so let's now now that we understand resistors, you know, and resistors are pretty intuitive. Let's try and look at capacitors, okay? Because that's sort of the next step. And that's kind of where we get a little bit more confused in these circuits whenever we take this next step uh, talking about impedance. So let's talk about a capacitor. So let's say we're working in the time domain for a capacitor. We know that equation that we have is going to be the current through a capacitor is equal to C times dV over dt. Now let's say we know the voltage across this capacitor. Let's say that this voltage is going to be equal to, we use that same voltage from above, 10 times cosine two pi times 1000 T, okay? Um, then there's no phase, okay? Now I'm gonna condense this a little bit and I'm just gonna write 10 cosine, instead of two pi times 1000, I'm just gonna write that as omega. And remember, omega is the ang angular frequency or two pi times the frequency, okay? And you'll see why I'm doing this later on. It's just gonna make the math easier. And I'll make a note over here that says omega is equal to 2000 pi. Okay, so this is the voltage. Now, I'm not gonna explain the, you know, cause this is sort of a uh, something you'll learn in calculus one typically how to take a derivative of something. So I'm not gonna explain this here because it's uh, sort of uh, an introductory concept, but I don't wanna to have to go all the way back and start talking about calculus because there is quite a bit of stuff you need to know to understand it. So instead, I'm just going to derive this for you. And I'm gonna say that dV over dt, okay? That's going to be equal to 10 times omega times negative sine omega t. So let me rewrite this, make sure I'm doing it, all of this correctly. Okay, so dV dt is going to be okay, negative 10 omega sine omega t. So that's dV dt, the derivative of the voltage. Now, let me erase this one because I just want to talk about this negative sign here. If you plot negative sign, okay, you'll see that all it looks like is cosine with a 90 degree phase shift with a plus 90 degree phase shift. Okay, so what we can do is we can rewrite what's in this parentheses, that negative sine omega t to be 10 times omega times cosine omega t plus 90 degrees. Okay, so this capacitor, or sorry, this dV dt has a 90 degree phase shift, okay? So now let's plug this in for current. So we're gonna say current is equal to C times dV over dt. So that's going to be 10 times omega times C times cosine omega t plus 90 degrees. Okay, so this is our, or this is our current I. Okay, so now let's convert everything that we have into the frequency domain, right? Because that's where we're going to be working for these AC circuits is in the frequency domain. Well, V is going to be easy, right? Because we said V up here is just 10 times cosine omega T. There's no phase shift. So we're just going to say V is equal to 10 angle zero degrees. Okay, so there's no phase shift in the frequency domain for the voltage. Now, for this current, it's going to be 10 times omega times C, okay? And then we get over into this part. Now we do have a phase shift, so I'm gonna do angle 90 degrees, okay? So, <clears throat> okay, so this is what we've got up until this point. So now I'm gonna tell you what is impedance, okay? So impedance is just going to be relating voltage and current in the frequency domain. 
an impedance is a complex value, so it's going to have a magnitude and a direction, and it's represented by Z. Okay, so Z is going to be impedance. That's what you're going to need to remember. Okay, so Z is just V divided by I. Okay, and I'm going to rewrite this in, uh, in a different form. I'm going to rewrite this voltage and current in a different form just to make it something that you can plug in directly to your calculator to find. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this instead as just 10 times e to the j times 0, which is just 10 because anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So e to the 0 is 1, so we're just left with 10. And now this is going to be 10 times j omega c. Okay, so 10 times j omega c. Now the reason I did j is because remember, if we're working in the complex plane, there's this real part, there, there's this real axis and an imaginary axis. So our 10, let me use the blue here, our 10 is on this axis here, the real axis. Okay, so our 10 is living on that real axis. Now, if we have a 90 degree phase shift, then that means our current is going to be living on this axis. Okay, so this axis is purely complex. Okay, so you can think of that as that there's no real part, so it's not going to be like a 10 plus j something. It's only complex, so that's why I'm writing it, it as 10 times j omega c. It's all a complex number. There's no real number part of it, okay, because it's only on that complex axis or the imaginary axis. So that's why it has that j. Okay? So now let's just plug this in, and if we do v, which is just 10, divided by i, which is 10 times j omega c. These tens will cancel out, and we get that the impedance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over j omega c. Okay, so this is a formula that you are going to absolutely need to remember, because this is a very basic formula for capacitors, that their impedance is equal to 1 divided by j omega c. Okay, and what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to say, okay, if we have this voltage across this capacitor, what is the current through that capacitor going to look like? Okay, and we can use this value of impedance to get that relation. So you can think of this as sort of like Ohm's law or for AC circuits, that V is equal to Z times I. Okay, and then Z, like we said, is going to be impedance. All right. So now, before we talk about that about this more, let's go ahead and look at an inductor. So we're going to do a pretty similar thing for an inductor. So let's talk about inductors. If we have a volt or if we have a current through an inductor, all right, so let's start with a current. Let's say we have a current I, and it's going to be equal to. I'll just use uh, a non. Well, let's use a, non a real value. So let's say we're working with two. Okay, two times cosine of omega t. And remember, omega is just the frequency or the angular frequency, but we don't really care about what it is specifically right now because we're just trying to find the impedance in the frequency domain. So we're going to end up getting rid of omega in the end anyways. Okay, so for now, just think of omega as the angular frequency. Well, once again, using the formula that, oh, excuse me, the voltage across an inductor is equal to L di over dt. What we can do is we can, excuse me, what we can do is that we can write the voltage across this inductor is going to be L times di dt. Again, I'm not going to derive it here, uh, but it's going to be 2 times omega times negative sine omega t. Let me make sure I have enough parentheses in. Okay. So, same thing, we can write that negative sine omega t as, let me rewrite this all again, 2 times omega times cosine omega t plus 90 degrees. Okay. So then let's just collect everything together. Okay, so I'm going to say VL is equal to <clears throat> 2 times omega L cosine omega t plus 90 degrees. All right, so this is the voltage across the inductor in the time domain. And again, you can see the voltage is leading the current. Now, for a capacitor, 
the current had a 90 degree phase shift. Where is that? Yeah. So we said the current had this 90 degree phase shift here. Okay, so the current was leading the voltage. For an inductor, the voltage is leading the current. Okay, so the voltage is leading the current. Let's convert everything into the frequency domain now. So this VL, oops, sorry. Use a little bit thicker of a line. So this VL in the frequency domain is going to be 2 omega L. All right, and then we have nothing else. So we're going to do angle. And then what's the phase here? All right, the phase here is going to be 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and convert this. So for a similar reason, this is going to be 2 times J times omega times L. Okay, okay, because remember, whenever we have a phase shift of 90 degrees, we're only on that imaginary axis, so that imaginary axis is going to be J. So that's going to add that J there. Now the current, that one's easy. It's just going to be 2, right? Because all we have for this current is this magnitude. We didn't have any phase shift, so it's going to be 2, angle, 0 degrees. Well, that's the same thing as just 2, right? Because if, if we're purely on that real axis, it's just 2. Okay, because there's no J portion of it, so it's only 2. So now let's just do V divided by I, because remember we said Z for this inductor is going to be the voltage across the inductor divided by the current through the inductor. So the voltage is 2 times J omega L. The current is just 2. We can cancel those 2's out, and that's going to give us J omega L. So this is another fundamental equation that you're going to need to know, okay? That the impedance of an inductor is J times omega times L. Okay, so the omega is its angular frequency. And now just to uh, make sure we wrap everything up and all nice and neat with the bow, I'm going to just show you how to convert uh, a value in the time domain or how to convert the value of a component to its impedance. Okay, so I'm going to do component value, just comp value or comp val on this left-hand side, and then I'm going to show you its impedance. Okay, so a resistor is easy. So if we have a resistance of R, then its impedance is just R. That's what we saw before. V divided by I in the frequency domain is still just R. Okay, so now, excuse me. So now, let's convert this capacitor. Okay, so if we have a capacitance, how are we going to get that impedance? Okay, let me make sure I'm separating this. So we have a capacitance. How are we going to get it, it get it to impedance? Well, it's just 1 divided by J omega C. And you can do a little bit of uh, complex algebra on it and manipulate it. This is the same thing as negative J over omega C. Okay? Now the last one is the inductor. Okay, so an inductor, to convert it to impedance, it's just J omega L. Okay, so this is how you convert those three basic components into the, their frequency domain impedance. Okay, now remember, impedance relates voltage and current in the frequency domain. Okay, so impedance allows us to use this equation, Z times I in the frequency domain. So if we know voltage and we want to find current, then we're going to use the impedance in order to calculate this. Okay, so one thing that you can notice here Capacitor, it's complex only because it only has a J portion, right? Everything is multiplied by a J. So the capacitor is only complex. It's the same thing for an inductor. It's complex only. Okay, So that means that they are going to shift. If, if they have a voltage across it, the current is going to be shifted either by plus or minus 90 degrees. Okay, And it depends on whether it's a capacitor or an inductor. Okay, And now resistors are just real only. So they only have a real part. So resistors aren't going to change the phase at all. Okay? But capacitors and inductors, they will change the phase by 90 degrees. Okay? So what we can do now is that we can say, well, now that we have this impedance and we have this impedance in a form that we're familiar with, just like resistors, we can use the same formulas that we did for resistors. Okay? So we can say if we have two impedances in series, so let me do Z series, if we have two impedances in series, the equivalent impedance is just Z1 plus Z2, okay? just like resistors. Now, if we have parallel impedances, 
then we use that same formula. So it's going to be Z1 times Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. All right now that's the equivalent, uh, equivalent impedance or two impedances in parallel. And just remember, impedances can be anything. They can be resistors, capacitors, or inductors. It doesn't matter. The only thing you have to do is use these formulas above to convert them to impedance, okay? And then you can work with them exactly like resistors, okay? Now, they're a little bit more difficult to work out by hand because you have these complex numbers and you might have mixtures of real and complex numbers. So that's why I said you're going to need a calculator for this stuff, okay? Because working these out by hand is just awful and it takes so much time to especially during an exam whenever you're time limited you're going to need a calculator in order to be effective with this okay so let's work out some problems because i know that this is pretty complex so let's go ahead and work out some problems and see what we can do here so let's do let's start off with this number one so let's say that we have this voltage source okay and you can see it's a sinusoidal excitation and it's a 10 with zero degree phase shift excitation. Okay. Then we have a one kilo ohm resistor and then a one nanofarad capacitor. Let me grab my calculator. So we have a one kilo ohm resistor and a one nanofarad capacitor. Now we are going to want to find the voltage and current everywhere. Now. We're going to need to know the frequency, and so the frequency is typically going to be given for these problems, or you might have to find it yourself. But for now, I'm just going to say the frequency is 1 megahertz. Okay, So this excitation is going to oscillate 1 million times per second. Okay, 1 megahertz is 1 million hertz. So the first thing we should try and find is the current through this resistor, the current through everything, right? Because this is a a uh, pretty simple circuit. We just have a resistor and a capacitor in series. So let's go ahead and try and find the current here. So if we want to get the current I, how can we get that? Well, we're going to need Ohm's law. Now, since we're working in, or since we're working with AC circuits and in the frequency domain, we can use Ohm's law for the frequency domain, which is just V divided by Z. Okay. So since you have this resistor and the capacitor in series, R and C both influence Z because you have these two in series and they're each going to contribute a little bit in order to that for that impedance. So the resistor is going to contribute some and then the capacitor is going to contribute to the total impedance that is seen by that source. Okay. So let's go ahead and work this out. So we're going to just calculate Z. Now Z is going to be, remember we have a resistor and a capacitor in series, so Z is going to be the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor. Okay, so this is just one kilo ohm plus, now we have to convert that capacitance into impedance so that in order to convert it to impedance, it's just going to be one divided by J omega C. So let me come down here and write this. So this is going to be again that one kilo ohm. The one the one kilo ohm resistor is easy because it's already it's already in impedance terms. Now <clears throat> let me see here. Okay, so let me see. Okay. I'm not quite sure I understood what I was doing there, but okay. I, well let me see. <laughs> so we have that one kilo ohm plus I started plugging in values too early on my notes. So we have 1 divided by j, 2 pi times this 1 megahertz, so 1 times 10 to the 6, okay? and then times this impede or this capacitance. So this is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 farads, right? because 1 nanofarad is 1 times 10 to the minus 9. So what we can do is we can simplify this a little bit. And I, I kept this in terms that we could understand, so um, we're not going to have to plug it into the calculator quite yet. I tried to do it algebraically, so we have 1 kilo ohm plus, okay, and then it's negative j, because we can move that j to the top and make it negative. So negative j, so I can just do 1 minus j, and then this ends up being 1,000 divided by 2 pi. Okay. So this is the total impedance seen by the source. So if we're that source and we look in, 
what we're going to see is an impedance equal to this, and we can convert that to a notation that we're uh, familiar with. Okay, so let me go ahead and just do that for you. So in your calculator, you would just plug in 1,000, so one kilo is 1,000, minus J, sure. so minus J, and then times 1,000 divided by 2 pi. And then it'll solve that for you. Z is equal to 1,013 with an angle of negative 9.04 degrees. Okay. So this is the value of impedance. So if I asked you what's the total impedance of this circuit, that's what you would say, that's what the, sorry, that's what your answer would be. So now, again, just using your calculator, to calculate the, oh, sorry, we're calculating the current. That's just going to be equal to V divided by Z. So in your calculator, what you can do is you can just do V, which is 10 with an angle of zero. So you can just do 10 divided by that value of impedance that you just got. Okay, and then if you do that, you'll find that the total current is going to be 9.88 times 10 to the minus three with an angle of 9.04 degrees. Okay, so the current has a, a abs or a magnitude of 9.88 milliamps, okay, and it is leading. Okay, it's leading the voltage by nine degrees, and okay? not 90, nine degrees. Okay, so this is the value of current that we've gotten. Okay, so now let's try and calculate the voltage, or so let's try and calculate this voltage here, which I'll call V1. And then we'll try and calculate um, VC. I'll just call that VC because it's the voltage across the capacitor. So let's start off with VC. Let me make this one thicker. So let's start off with VC. So VC, remember, is just I times Z, right? Because this is Ohm's law for the frequency domain. Just I times Z is equal to V. So this is going to be the impedance of the capacitor. So if we plug this in, this is going to be 9.88 times 10 to the minus 3. Let me make sure I got that minus there. With an angle of 9.04 degrees. And then times negative J, 1,000 over 2 pi. And you just got to plug that into your calculator. And then you can get 1.57 with an angle of negative 80.96 degrees. Okay, so we can see that this is the voltage across the capacitor. Remember the current through that capacitor has a phase shift of 9 degrees. This one has a phase shift of negative 80.96 degrees. So you can see that voltage and current in that capacitor are still 90 degrees out of phase. Okay, so uh, intuitively we can make sense of this and we can ensure that we're going going along with this correctly. Okay, because voltage and current is always going to be 90 degrees out of phase in a capacitor. So now let's calculate V1. So to calculate V1, I actually don't even have this one in my notes here, but to calculate V1, it's pretty easy. So V1 is just going to be VC, right? And then plus VR. Now what's VR? VR is just going to be the current times the impedance of that resistor. Okay. Now the impedance of the resistor is just 1000. So I can already tell you that this is going to be 9.88 times 10 to the minus three. Maybe because this is the current with an angle of 9.04 degrees. Alrighty. Now we multiply this by 1000. Then we're going to get VR is equal to 9.88 with an angle of 9.04 degrees. Alrighty, so this is the voltage across this resistor here. Let me make sure that I make this correctly. This is the voltage across the resistor, VR. Now V1, like we said, is just VR plus VC, so I'm going to need the calculator for this one. So I'm going to do 9.88, let me make sure I get that angle sign, with an angle of 9.04, okay, and then plus the voltage across that capacitor, which is 1.57 with an angle of negative 80.96. Oh my, gotta make sure I put that in correctly. 
So <clears throat> intuitively, we, we're seeing this 9.88 and a 1.57, right? And those are the magnitudes of each of these. And we're saying, wait, we're adding these two together. You know, isn't that going to give us something more than 10? But because they have a direction and the way vector addition works, okay, because this, you can think of it as the voltage across the resistor is pointed like this. It's pointed in this direction. Now, the voltage across that capacitor is pointed like way down here. So if we add them together, what's going to happen is that they will add together to come to exactly 10. Okay, now I didn't get exactly 10 because, you know, we've made a couple of rounding errors here, but I got really, really close to 10. Okay, so if we wanted to know V1, that's just going to be 10 with an angle of zero degrees. And that makes sense because the only thing we have is that 10 or that 10 volt source there. Okay. So now we've completely solved this circuit. Now you can see that if you were going to do this all by hand, it would be terrible. That's why I'm saying you have to have a calculator and you have to be comfortable with your calculator. Okay, You have to know how to do these this complex math very quickly and how to punch it in very quickly or else you're going to be at a disadvantage on any sort of exams. So having a good calculator is really good, and I'm sure that there's online calculators that can do this for you. Or you might be able to even find uh, an emulator or something like that online uh, where you can emulate a really high-end calculator like this one. So let's do another example, just to make sure that we're feeling good about all of this. So I've got another example for you. So this one is going to be a little bit simpler. So we're just going to be interested in Zn. So what is the impedance looking into this circuit? So we're going to have a 20 volt source with zero degrees of phase shift. Okay, and then we're going to have a one milli Henry inductor. Then we're going to have a five ohm resistor in parallel with it. Five ohm resistor. Now we want to know what is the impedance that is seen by this source? So what is Zn? Well, we know if we have parallel resistors, we can combine them using the parallel formula. And then we also know that we can do the same thing with impedances. So all we have to do is convert that inductor. It's an inductance right now. We convert that to an impedance. Okay? And then once we convert it to impedance, we can calculate the total impedance looking in. And we're going to need to know the frequency. So F is going to be one kilohertz or 1000 hertz. So let's write out what we know. So we have Vs is equal to 20 with no phase shift, zero degree of phase shift. We know that Zn is going to be equal to Zl times Zr over Zl plus Zr. Okay. So let's substitute what we know for Zl. So this is going to be ZL. What's the impedance of an inductor? You can scroll back up and look at it, uh, rewind this video and look at it, but you can see that the impedance of an inductor is J omega L in the complex domain or in the free, or in the phasor domain or frequency domain, whatever you want to think of it as. It's J omega L times R, okay, because we're multiplying it by the impedance of the resistor. Impedance of the resistor is just R. Okay, so J omega L times R, and on the bottom, we're going to do J omega L plus R. Okay. So let's write this whole thing out. So we're going to have J omega, which is 2 pi times the frequency, which is 1,000. L is 1 times 10 to the minus 3, because it's 1 millihenry. Okay. And then times that resistor, which is just 5 ohms. Okay. And then we're going to put this all over j times 2 pi times 1,000 uh, times 1 times 10 to the minus 3, then plus 5 ohms instead of times. Now, you can plug this into your calculator. I did this beforehand just to make sure I got the values correct for these examples. But what you'll see is that you will get 3.91, the phase shift of 38.5 degrees. Okay. So this is the total impedance that is going to be seen looking into this circuit. All right, so that's going to be our total impedance looking into the circuit. Now, just as an exercise, let's calculate the current through that inductor and through the resistor. Okay, so let's see. Let's start off with the current through the inductor. Well, the current through the inductor is just going to be the voltage across the inductor divided by 
its impedance. Voltage, we know, it's 20, the phase shift of zero degrees, or just 20. I'm just going to keep this 20 for now to keep this clean. All right, and oh, let me just erase this whole thing. So the voltage is going to be 20. Now, what's its impedance? It's J times 2 pi times 1,000, or because omega is just 2 pi times the frequency, times the inductance, 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay. And what we'll find is that the current through the inductor is equal to 3.18 with a phase shift of negative 90 degrees. Okay. So the voltage is leading the current. Voltage leads the, cur or voltage leads the current in an inductor. Or you can say the current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. Okay. So now let's calculate the current through that resistor. So the current through that resistor is going to be that same voltage, the voltage across the resistor, divided by the impedance of the resistor. So that's going to be 20 divided by, well, no, we're not working with 1,000. We're working with a 5-ohm resistor here. So 20 volts divided by 5 ohms. So that's just going to give us 4. And remember, if there's no angle sign there, that just means an angle of 0 degrees. So 4 with an angle of 0 degrees. So the current is actually in phase with the voltage in the resistor. And that makes sense because before we said there's no phase shift for the voltage and current in a resistor. Okay. So let's add these two things up. Okay. So let's add these two things up and see what happens. Actually, you know, before we do that, let's just let's keep these answers in mind. And then we're going to try this a different way. Okay. So we know that uh, we know the impedance looking into the circuit. Right, so because we calculated Z in here, let's calculate the current or the total current through that source. So the total, the total current through the source is going to be voltage of the source divided by the impedance it sees. Okay? So if we plug in 20, with an angle of zero degrees, over this value of impedance, 3.91, that one's there, with an angle of 38.5 degrees, that's going to give us 5.11 with an angle of negative 38.5 degrees. Okay, so that is the current being delivered by the source. So you can see the source is delivering a lagging current. Okay? The voltage has a zero degree phase shift. The current is delayed by 38.5 degrees, or you can say it has a minus 38.5 degree phase shift. So the current is sort of lagging, and that's because the inductor is going to contribute to that lagging current. Okay, so you can see its contribution here. Now, ideally, you know, like I said, we expect to be able to add these two things together. Right? We expect to be able to add these two currents here because the current in the inductor and the current in the resistor should add up to equal the total current. But initially, it doesn't really look like it will, because we've got 3.18 and 4, and then we're supposed to add that up to 5. You know, how is this all going to work out? You know, if we're initially just looking at it, we can't really tell what's going to happen, because this stuff is complex and hard to see. And uh, so what we have to do is, just as an exercise to show you that this actually does work, is if you add these two together, so IL plus IR, you actually don't even get anything close to 7. You actually get 5.11 the phase of negative 38.5 degrees. And you'll notice these two match up exactly. So I know that this is this might be sort of hard to follow. This stuff might feel like, you know, why are you defining it this way? Or why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's, it's not very intuitive, and it takes a long time to sort of get a feel for this and understand what's happening in these circuits. But you can see that no matter what we do, no matter which route we take, we're always getting the same answers. Okay, so that shows us that we're doing this stuff correctly. So in this video, we looked at impedance. I introduced you to the equations that we're going to need to calculate the impedance of a capacitor, the impedance of an, induct of an inductor, and the impedance of a resistor. So I hope that you really memorize those because those are going to be really important for us later on, especially whenever we're looking at examples later on. So the next video I have planned, we're going to be looking at some AC circuit analysis examples. It's going to be uh, some semi-basic stuff. You know, it's going to be calculating voltages, currents, and impedances. Uh, but like I said, these AC circuits are kind of unintuitive, so it really is helpful to do some examples and make sure you're doing everything correctly. 
And then once we get done with those AC circuit analysis examples, what we're going to do is we're going to look at LT SPICE again to see how can we simulate these circuits and make sure that we're doing the correct thing in these circuits. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Otherwise, I'm Aaron Carmen, and thank you for watching.